I am not sure about this light. I am in a new corner of my craft room because I am rearranging in a big way, a big way. Okay, but that is not what this video is about today. Today, this video is about a Christmas ornament, a mushroom Christmas ornament. If you've been on this channel with me any length of time, you know I like a mushroom. Mushroom, montage, hair is flying everywhere. Minion, ugh. So I got several of these for a dollar each at Pop Shelf, which is a somewhat fancier dollar store that has opened up, uh, I don't know where else, but I'm in Texas and they just uh, appeared um, overnight like mushrooms. So yeah, this, uh, don't love it, but I love the shape. It's plastic and um, I'm going to remake this in my style as a Christmas ornament with clay and maybe some beads and some paint. And it is an easy project if you want to uh, do it as well. So let's just, let's do it. The mushroom says, look into my spot, do this craft. I am not endorsing hypnotic mushrooms. Um, okay, let's just move on. Hi, baby Groots. Oh, there's a kitty. Uh, my initial thought was to use some kind of clay, air dry clay, because the plastic mushrooms cannot go into the oven where a polymer clay would bake. With these clays, I ended up with sort of a Goldilocks situation. The epoxy sculpt is very strong. I like how it looked a lot when I did some tests, but it is just too expensive to do any number of mushrooms. I got this Nara clay and because it was $3.99 and I hate it. I don't like it. Maybe you like it better, but Santa does not recommend. He does not. So cheap is not always better. So in the middle is this creative paper clay. And I know it's good. I've used it quite a bit on my Midsommar um, Danny May Queen project. So I think I'm gonna go primarily with the creative paper clay. This time we are going to play Shadow Puppet Theater. Guess that Shadow Puppet. I think my shadows are a duck holding a knife in its mouth trying to cut open a lemon. And he's getting very frustrated. It's a very tough lemon skin. He's not the strongest duck. Yep, that's what I think it is. What do you think it is? Hello again. Okay, so I went ahead and put a little top uh, bit of clay, very thin, uh, just to cover the top. And I actually secured uh, the little silver guy that always likes to fall out with the clay, so that should be strong. And now we're going to add a second layer 
kitties climbing in the stocking, Christmas stocking bags. I'm not giving you away in a stocking. Are you done now? Okay, we're gonna put a second layer of clay on this, slightly thicker, and we're gonna add some texture. Uh, there's different ways you can add texture. You can just draw it yourself with whatever tool, even a toothpick. Uh, you can use rubber stamps. If you got a rubber stamp collection, that works just great. Um, it is best to do it on the mushroom. So, you know, your pattern's not gonna be, if it's a real straight, symmetrical pattern, uh, it's not going to come out real great on a round. Also, this pink thing, this is a, it's a mold, but it's just real tiny. It's like what they use for um, fondant for cakes, for very fancy cakes. You can also use molds. Uh, this is an example of a mold, and it turns out really pretty, but it's hard to get it to stick on without pressing and ruining what you've molded. So I would suggest either conforming it to the shape and then gluing it on or adding some glue and then putting it on. But my favorite tool at the moment for this project to add texture is this paper. This is a wonderful embossed paper and you can just go smish and this lovely pattern is here. It's swirly whirly. And what's great about it is um, even if it's irregular, it looks great. So that is what I'm going to do. And then we're going to paint the mushroom. And then we're going to do something special with beads. And then we're close to done. Okay. Here we go.
Peraí.